Welcome to our final video in the SR Lounge Canon Lens Wars series. This is the 300 millimeter lens wars and we have a total of four lenses that we're gonna be comparing. We have here the 28 to 300 f 3.5 to 5.6L, the 100 millimeter f 4.5 to 5.6L. We have the 300 millimeter f 4L and the monster 300 millimeter f 2.8L IS Mark II. For those of you that are new to the SR Lounge Canon Lens Wars series, be sure to check out the actual teaser video on srlounge.com where we basically introduce the series, we talk about our testing methodology and what we're looking for, and also check out all the other videos and articles on SR Lounge as well for each focal length. This is the final video in the focal length comparison where we're going to be covering the 300mm focal length. So let's start from the top with their aesthetic quality and sharpness at their respective WOAs or wide open apertures. And once again, this is a visual test of differences, not a technical test. So we're trying to distinguish between differences in appearance while viewing the images full screen on a 27 inch 3K resolution display. Now the funny thing about this focal length was that I had the hardest time at trying to differentiate the images between these four lenses and really more so than any other grouping and that wasn't expected especially when I had this monster among the set. But as I flipped through the image sequence more and more I was finally able to tell apart certain lenses. For example the 28 to 300 and the 100 to 400 I noticed that they had slightly smaller and less defined bokeh and that at their wide open aperture which was at f5.6 we really didn't have as much bokeh as well. But trying to visualize visually distinguish, say the 300mm f4 from the 300mm f2.8 was almost impossible and I found that very strange. In fact, the only thing to me that really gave it away was that the bokeh appeared just a bit smoother and the contrast and color rendered slightly better on the 300mm f2.8 than it did on the 300mm f4. But aside from that, these four images were very similar in their overall look, so I wanted to start looking in just a bit closer. Now when I zoomed in, the differences became much more noticeable. Particularly when we were looking at our model and her dress, I noticed that the 300mm at its WOA of 2.8 was absolutely tack sharp. The 300mm f4 was the next most sharp, but it was still significantly less sharp than the 2.8, of course with a huge price tag, it should be less sharp. It was tough trying to figure out which was sharper though between the 100 to 400 and the 28 to 300. Both of these were less sharp than even say the F4. And likewise, even the edge sharpness on the 300 millimeter 2.8 was absolutely tack sharp and amazing compared to the other three lenses. But we're talking about a lens that's approaching $7,000, so it better be sharp everywhere. At their WCA or their widest common aperture of F5.6, the visual differences in terms of the amount of bokeh, the aesthetics, it kind of dropped away or equalized for the most part. In addition, because the 28 to 300's lens vignetting at its WOA of f5.6 at 300 millimeters, it was very strong and it had a vignetting that kind of suited the overall look to the image. But it was a significant amount of vignetting compared to the other lenses, even that of the 100 to 400. The 300 millimeter f4 and the f2.8 had pretty much no vignetting at 5.6, and the 300 millimeter f2.8 was still noticeably sharper when viewing the image full screen, even at their WCA of 5.6. Okay, so how about a conclusion? Well, for overall image quality, for the aesthetics and the amount of the bokeh that it rendered, from the performance and color contrast and so forth, really the 300 f2.8 was the clear winner. But it costs more than 6,800 bucks, so your wallet is not the clear winner. But that's two and a half times more expensive than the next most expensive lens in this lineup and four and a half times more expensive than the 300 millimeter f4. So once again, we have an extreme specialty lens. All of these lenses do have image stabilization, which of course is pretty necessary at this long of a focal length. So really with the 300 f2.8, you're paying over $5,000 more for a single stop of low light performance, a bit better image quality and a little bit more bokeh and aesthetics and so forth. And like the 200 f2, this lens is also large and in charge, so expect to need a monopod to keep this thing stable after a few moments of shooting because your arm is gonna absolutely die. Also, like the 200 F2, I can really only see this lens as being justifiable as if you absolutely must have that extra stop of light. It's required by, say, a professional sports photographer or for very specific shooting situations. Now, for less than 1500 bucks, you can get the 300 F4L IS, which if you need the 300 millimeter focal length and a good low light performing lens, this lens is gonna give you the best best bang for the buck. Its visual and aesthetic performance is also extremely similar to that of the 300 f2.8. And in fact, I'd probably say that it's say 90 to 95% of this lens, yet it costs so much less, two and a half times less. All right, so this makes it probably the best deal in the 300 millimeter lineup in terms of a telephoto lens that has overall fantastic image quality, great aesthetic quality, and overall good low light performance. This is the one in the group that I can recommend.
Again, the 100 to 400 and the 28 to 300 are both good lenses at the 300 millimeter focal length, but their advantage is in their versatility and not so in their overall image quality. So they're not going to be as sharp or offer the same aesthetic look in the bokeh and the same aesthetic quality and the contrast and color and so forth as the 300 millimeter f4 and the 300 millimeter 28. At f5.6, at 300 millimeters, they also offer less low light performance as well, and they're not necessarily inexpensive either. The 20 to 300 is going to set you back around $2,700 and the 100 to 400 will set you back $1,700. So you have to decide if the convenience of basically having a single lens for this entire focal length is worth the overall reduction in performance. If in that case you say that a single lens kit is worth having, then I would still go with the 28 to 300. I hope you all enjoyed this conclusion to the 300 millimeter focal length in the SR Lounge Canon Lens Wars series. Now be sure to check out the actual article on srlounge.com by clicking the link in the description below the video where you can see more example images, more information on each lens, as well as links on where to purchase. My name is Pi and I'll see you all in the next video.